Hello YouTube. For this video, I wanted to focus on the Russian Empire in this game of Axis and Allies 1914. And we're going to be looking at everything kind of in a, a just overview environment. In my previous Russian video for this game, we had simulated what Austria might do on its first turn and Russia was responding in part to that. So for this uh, video, I wanted to look at just things that you want to keep in mind as Russia, even before you start a game, before you've seen what Austria is even doing. Where do you need to look? How are you going to formulate a strategy? <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we're just going to go through all of Russia's fronts and all of the concerns it's going to have early on and how it might deal with them. Now Russia goes second in turn order. Only Austria-Hungary has gone before Russia. Um, so you don't have to worry about a bunch of countries going before you go and it really impacting all your plans. So let's get down to business. First off, in the south, we have the Ottoman Empire here. Now, there are two approaches you might take with the Ottomans. If you want to take a more aggressive approach, especially if England is going to come into India, you might attack Mesopotamia on your first turn. If the other allies, you, you know, you talk to Italy and France especially, maybe England would get on it, in on it, but they're probably the least likely, about trying to take out this Ottoman fleet, uh, either before the Ottomans turn, or uh, really it's more likely before the Ottoman second turn, you might attack with your navy here, because you know other allied ships are going to be coming in. If that isn't going to happen, then you're probably better off leaving your navy here just to defend, because you've got sea mines if they try to attack, but they've got sea mines if you try to attack, so really the defender has the advantage in that situation. Now, I personally prefer an attack on Mesopotamia. I think that it will fizzle out without some British support, um, so hopefully England is willing to help you out, but even if they're not, let's say, for the sake of argument, that England isn't going to back you up, so you decide not to attack Mesopotamia. Well, the Ottomans, if you've moved too much out of Sevastopol and it's vulnerable, it doesn't even have to be vulnerable for them to capture, just vulnerable for them to contest for a turn or two. They can move troops up here, now you're down three production, now you have to shift something away from the uh, from your other primary front down to take it back, potentially, which means that then you're weaker against what are really going to be your primary opponents along here. And if the Ottomans somehow manage to take it, that is a huge boon for them. And they're more than likely going to be trying to push in through this way into Bulgaria. Um, they may get, they're naturally going to try and push into Romania. And then if they have Sevastopol, you could be in a world of hurt. Because now you've got the Ottoman front here. You've got all three central powers, really, all across the border focusing on you, Russia. So that's really not a position you want to be in. And I think that that can be avoided, at least for a couple turns, if Russia attacks Mesopotamia with its forces, you know, its forces that it has arrayed down here. Um, this guy in Kazakhstan can't get there on the first turn, but you can start swinging him around uh, to help if needed, or to just fortify Sevastopol if you need to do that. Um, it really is better if England is able to help, because then you could, the Allies can potentially take Mesopotamia, not just contest it, and then it's the Ottomans that are in a lot of trouble. But this video isn't about the Ottomans or about what England may do, uh, so I don't want to get too hung up on that. That's just something, uh, because it's in Russia's neighborhood, that it's critical that Russia and England coordinate uh, whatever they're trying to do down here. <clears throat> now we talked about how the Ottomans are probably going to, they're going to move into Bulgaria. Um, that's almost a sure thing and they're going to want to start moving up here. So what are we going to do as Russia? We go before the Ottomans, so they will be a turn behind us. Assuming Austria hasn't attacked Romania, we want to move at least one unit in there so that we can get free units on our turn. Um, if Austria has moved in there, then we either already have the units in Romania, 
we'll get to use them on our turn, or it has attacked with sufficient force as to wipe out the neutral Romanian forces, but then that's going to leave them, at least in theory, that should leave them weaker somewhere else along the front. Galatia is the critical territory for Austria. If they have left that uh, vulnerable, then we want to go after that. Typically, you will not see an Austrian player do that just because that, I mean, that is a huge blunder if they leave Galatia open. Now, I'm good. I want to focus on this central part uh, here in just a couple minutes because that's the most critical. But really quick, I want to talk about the situation up in the north. We have one battleship up there. It's protest protected by sea mines. If Germany wanted to build transports, uh, which it really doesn't start out with any over here in the North Sea, it could start causing us problems over here if that battleship wasn't there on defense. Germany could try and pull back and take out the battleship. They certainly have the naval forces to do that, but then that means they're going to be leaving England and France um, in a much stronger position. They do have some subs out there, but if they divert... Uh, their service fleet over here, they are splitting things up. So, uh, and it really isn't going to help Germany out a whole lot. Maybe later in game it will, but early on, clearing out that Russian battleship is not really going to help them a whole lot. And you can't really move it, I mean, you, well, you can move it west, but Germany has uh, sea mines here, and then it has more sea mines over here, so you're kind of running the gauntlet my uh, opinion is that it's better served in a defensive position. Uh, if you have some sort of an opening, uh, maybe Germany builds some transports, forgetting about your battleship, you might move it out to try and you know take out those transports if they're undefended or if they're very lightly defended. But uh, by and large, that navy is probably going to be very similar to your two cruisers down here in the Black Sea. Uh, you're probably just going to use them for defensive purposes. Now let's get to the uh, crux of the matter, the meat here. <clears throat> there are two main conventional strategies uh, that I really see with the Austrians. Um, and I've covered uh, one in my first video uh, on Austria and the other one in my more recent video on Austria. They consist of the blunt approach where Austria attacks Poland and then Russia counters and then Germany counters and then Austria counters. Basically, the Central Power is trying to bludgeon Russia to death, um, and because of production, that is a war that eventually they will win. Um, it's a little bit more blunt. Uh, if Austria attacks Poland, I think that it's almost required that Russia counterattack, because Poland up here and Ukraine here are the two critical territories for Russia, because Poland connects a huge portion of the front, three territories, and I mean, if you've got Romania down here, you've got that border, but um, that's not a core territory. And then Ukraine, of course, connects with that uh, neutral, but it also connects with all of these territories all around it, one of which is the capital. So if Poland falls or Ukraine falls, Russia is in a lot of trouble. It has to defend from a bunch of different you know, on a bunch of different territories, the central powers can pick and choose, oh, Russia's a little bit weaker here, we'll attack here. Oh, Russia split its forces, Germany go this way, Austria go that way. Ottomans potentially go a third way. Not a good situation for Russia to be in. Those two territories are critical. So if the central powers have shown they want to do the blunt approach, uh, you're going to have to counter them. You can't let Poland fall. If Austria has left itself weak in Galatia, you might counterattack there and in Poland, and suddenly uh, Austria is going to get pushed back on the defensive and be in a world of hurt. Assuming that doesn't happen, um, eventually, yes, that's a war of attrition. You will lose. It's going to take a number of rounds. Um, so you're going to be counting on your allies uh, to either really put the hurt on Germany so that Germany has to start diverting forces away from you, or that uh, England and or France start shoveling U units either in the north uh, or in the south somehow. Uh, you could potentially get help from Italy, but unfortunately, uh, at least early on in the game, I mean, a lot of things can happen, a lot of crazy things. 
but you've got to plan your strategy initially on uh, you know what's likely to happen. You can't plan a strategy on oh well Italy is going to build a navy and it's going to support me up in the up in the uh, Baltic because it happened in one game that somebody played. I mean maybe it, maybe at some point it could happen, but you can't count on that. And because of the production and because of the geography. Um, and because Austria is very likely to start pinning down Italy on the first turn up here in Venice and potentially there in Tuscany, um, it's very unlikely Italy's going to be able to do much, uh, at least in the first few rounds of the game, besides pin down some Austrian forces, which is important, um, but you wouldn't want to count on them sending major reinforcements over to help Russia. Now. If Austria attacks Poland on the first turn, that's your indication that the Central Powers, assuming Austria and Germany are coordinating, which they should, that they're going to go with that blunt approach. Now, if Germany suddenly tries to flood into France, then suddenly you're facing predominantly just Austria, and you can deal uh, with uh, just fighting Austria, uh, typically. I mean, yes, you've got the Ottomans, but uh, England's got India down here, so the Ottomans... Uh, unless they're being ignored by England, or you're, you want to completely ignore them, shouldn't really be a problem, and you can focus predominantly on Austria. Now, the other possibility is that Austria may not attack. It may heavily build up and fortify in Galatia, because that threatens your two key territories. And then Germany, already on its turn, which it does go after you, but on its turn it can attack Poland, and you don't really have the forces in Poland to make an offensive move. I mean, you could, but it isn't really going to accomplish you anything. Besides, uh, most units defend better than they attack in this game. Uh, aside from tanks, but you won't have those for a number of turns. So, that puts the Central Powers in a position where they can either, on the second turn, gang up on Poland, or they could Germany go into Poland, Austria go into Ukraine, and try and hit both of those key territories all at once. So I think that if that happens... Uh, it's still critical that you move all your forces forward. But I think, then I haven't done the math on this, but I think the best approach, uh, well, a good approach anyway, I don't know if it's the best, is going to be to uh, consolidate as many infantry as possible up in Poland, because infantry defend better than they attack, which means that if the Central Powers decide to try and bludgeon you up there on the second round, uh, at least you will cause as many possible ca as many ca yeah, excuse me I'm sorry I can't talk as many casualties as possible maybe have a couple artillery up there just in case just to increase the numbers but artillery are really good at offense I mean they're better at offense they give your infantry a bonus when it comes to offense so I would say if I saw the central powers doing that I would move as many infantry as possible up into Poland. Uh, minimize the number of artillery, maybe have a couple just for balancing sake. Um, and that's because both central powers, both major central powers, can hit Poland. And I would uh, consolidate the in as many infantry as I can that maybe can't get to Poland into Ukraine, and I would consolidate my artillery in Ukraine because only one central power, and it's the weaker central power at that, is able to attack Ukraine. And that also puts you in an excellent position to counterattack into Poland if you need to, uh, you know, the following turn, you know, the turn after the Central Powers make their move. I might have to count up the units and figure out exactly how much I'd want where. Certainly we don't want either of those uh, territories extremely weak to invite a, a Central Power attack before you get a chance to go, but Poland is definitely the one more vulnerable to attack since both central powers can hit it. Uh, so that's where I would fo predominantly focus my defense while predominantly focusing my offense down in Ukraine. Now that is uh, just my take on it. Certainly I'm sure there are others out there. If you have uh, any thoughts on what Russia might do, maybe things that Russia did in games you've played that worked out particularly well, uh, please leave a comment. I'd be very interested to hear those. I hear about uh, other ideas, uh, other approaches Russia might take. Um, but for me, that is uh, kind of how I view playing the country.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it.